With the rapid rate at which technology develops, combined by the increasing internet speed, the world indeed got smaller. Technology makes it possible to connect people across the globe, opening up endless opportunities. Good day and welcome to this episode of Entrepreneurial Edge with myself, Tanya Habimana. My guest today is joining us from Dubai with existing operations in Africa, Dubai and Singapore. Let's welcome Boye Balogan, the CEO and founder of Future Tech Media. So Boye, I mean, you grew up in London, had a thriving career within digital marketing, working with top agencies across different sectors. And then one day you thought to yourself, I'm going to try this entrepreneurial thing, and why not in emerging markets? Tell us about your entrepreneurial beginnings and how it all came to pass. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting, actually. Uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs will tell you they're quite uh, the accidental entrepreneurs. Uh, I think I worked in the corporate world and media and advertising agencies uh, for quite a few years. Uh, and I just saw an opportunity. The first business I set up was uh, Media Fusion in Nigeria, short-lived, uh, but gave me the confidence for uh, most of the things I'm building today. Uh, and I think when most people move to the Middle East, specifically the UAE, there's just a really quite nice energy about uh, the time and place uh, that the country is right now and the connectivity to you know, the, the rest of the Middle East and to Africa that really encourages you to uh, do more uh, outside your nine to five uh, and pick up, uh, you know, new activities and new businesses. Uh, am I, you know, I saw a challenge to create something different in media and advertising. I saw an opportunity that didn't exist in, in the Middle East and Africa. And I, you know, I took a punt uh, and it's, uh, uh, and the rest of the story just wrote itself really. And I guess that's why they call it a dynamic markets, right? It's because it's all about the dyna dynamicity, the, the dynamicness of, uh, of the emerging markets. But going back to your first venture, um, you say it was short-lived. Why? What happened? And what did you learn from it? You know, I, I, was, I was quite young. I just finished uh, my, uh, my first role at uh, a company called Proferro, where I was working on media accounts for... Uh, you know, Apple, Western Union, a few UK banking clients. Uh, but I always have this yearning to, you know, explore some of my roots, uh, you know, explore Nigeria. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure why I wanted to create, uh, but given my background in media, marketing and technology, uh, I thought I'd take a punt. Uh, and, you know, I did. It was, uh, it, was, it was a business that focused on small businesses, uh, but I think we were way too early to market. Uh, and I, I remember coming, you know, going back to the UK and, go, you know, going back to, uh, you know, a structured and corporate world. And a lot of people asked me, you know, was that a failure? And I was like, no, it was, it was the best felt 18 months of my life uh, because I, I learned how to run a business uh, and it was a great learning experience. Uh, and it's really helped me build uh, in terms of mindset uh, and also in terms of approach, uh, a, a lot of the businesses that I am now building. So if I'm understanding correctly, so Nigeria was actually your first um, location in terms of your entrepreneurial venture. Then you go back absolutely. to the UK and then to the UAE. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's a great story, actually. Uh, so I returned from Nigeria back to back to London specifically. Uh, I worked for a company called Prefero, which is now called low prefer if i remember uh correctly and it was an integrated one of the first digital agencies in the uk which brought creative and media together into kind of one unit really creative won loads and loads of awards uh and i just landed back in london lagos and you know a little bit a little bit down in because you know it was hard 12 months uh i just you know uh shut down the business uh, and i went back into the to the talent market and what I didn't realize is the confidence you get from running your own business uh, was just so attractive to uh, recruiters. Uh, and, you know, I landed a job within, within, a, within a week. Uh, and that trajectory is, uh, has kind of really helped me in terms of confidence, uh, but also in, in, in terms of looking back at the continent and going, hold on, there's something here. 
uh, and it's something I have to revisit. Not right now, but something I have to revisit. So I spent another, um, you know, close to seven years uh, working across various media agencies, working on global advertising clients. Uh, so I worked for WPP, uh, and I, you know, uh, the UK is great. Uh, but at some point, I really wanted to challenge myself. You know, I, I felt it was a little bit of a finite mar market, and I had a real draw to emerging markets. Uh, so I took another job, uh, you know, within the group, to uh, a company called Mindshare in, in Dubai, uh, and that's how I, you know, landed in in, in the Middle East. Well, you know what I'm finding quite interesting? It's something we don't hear quite often. Um, this notion of the fact that you went into, well, you ventured on your own, you became an entrepreneur, and then went back to the corporate world, and that was seen as an advantage. Is that something that you look at in your own recruiting efforts? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're businesses built off uh, talent, you know, people. Uh, and we like to recruit entrepreneurs because we, we, we simply want future leaders. Right. We don't want cogs in machines, uh, and we're close knit organization. We built like a SWAT team, uh, and the job is to build future leaders, can lead organizations, divisions. Uh, and, you know, I even when I recruit people, uh, I tell them when you get to a point and you think maybe this is not, this company is not the direction for you anymore, and you're setting up your own business, we'll be the first to, to invest. So it, it's really based around people really trying to stay true to the ethos of developing future leaders. That's really, I, I really like that. It's something you don't hear quite a lot. Um, you know, a lot of companies are actually quite worried when their team, their employees are venturing out and they're losing the talent at hand. But you're basically saying, hey, we're looking for great talent and we're ready to invest in them. Um, but going back to your entrepreneurial path. So you're now in Dubai. What was it like on operating in, uh, in the Middle East? Yeah, I, I think what was really great for me, and this is why I say people should have structure uh, before entrepreneurship is, you know, you've got to know what you want to challenge. You've got to know what you want to break. You, you've got to know what you, you want to innovate. Uh, and we, we, we have quite a structured, uh, I would say, media and advertising world. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's big tech. It's, you know, it's global media players. Uh, you know, and I spent three years, uh, you know, running and running uh, the digital part of, part of an organization across, you know, 16 markets in the Middle East. Um, that was a learning experience, definitely an ongoing experience, but also a great experience to, to network and, you know, look at the things I wanted to change. Um, so when I did go out to set up Future Tech, which, uh, you know, is a company that uh, I'm still scaling and, I, you know, I run a CEO now, uh, I, I already knew what I wanted to challenge. I knew what I wanted to disrupt. And in terms of, uh, again, I'll say time and place of, you know, this connectivity between, I'll say, Dubai and the, and the rest of the Middle East and the rest of Africa, it's just the right time for the country in terms of, uh, I'll say, the structure and the infrastructure, uh, the connectivity, um, that's physical connectivity, where there's, yeah. you know, airlines, planes, planes, uh, but also digital connectivity. So there's a there's a budding uh, business world that is full of Europeans, Africans, Arabs uh, at the moment, uh, and which is very encouraging. So you know that really helped me, my previous experience, uh, but also uh, I would say this time and place uh, in in Dubai and the role is playing in the cross border uh, growth uh, of the region. And you know um, what? What's quite uh, what comes up quite a lot is that you know you enter into a new market, you're um, networking, you're meeting a lot of people, you're creating your business plan, you're strategizing. But there's a a difference between actually entering the market and setting up, and well, making money and landing that first client. So how did you go about landing your very first client? Uh, well, the, the, I'll tell you a little bit about how, you know, how we came up with, with, with the idea for Future Tech Media. I, I don't know if you've ever been to the, uh, the Festival of Media in Cannes. It's, you know, it's four days of uh, the world and what, and, you know, all the big agency network, all the big advertisers, tech players. It's a great place to spend three to four days learning uh, and networking and understanding 
what's coming, the trends are coming in terms of uh, media and advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was on the way back from Cannes to, to Dubai uh, on, you know, I had this notebook, you know, this Emirates gives you this really nice notebook and a pen. Uh, and I, you know, I wrote our business plan, the first sketch of it, uh, within you know within within that flight uh, because I was just so imbibed with uh, a lot of energy a lot of inspiration um, and I uh, you know once 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 I landed I re networked with well I resigned first of all uh, which is uh, <laughs> always an interesting thing to do but, yeah, but my I'm sure. my company was very very nice and open about it uh, and I went straight back. Uh, to the same company and they're my second client. Uh, so it's, you know, it's good to live on good terms, but it's also, it's also good to build on what you know. Uh, and that's been, you know, some of, some of our growth has come from uh, this really tight knit network uh, that trusts us to deliver, you know, great innovative advertising, uh, but also just trust us as people beyond, beyond the business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for any, for any entrepreneur, this kind of credibility button is something that uh, I've really traded on as, as I grow businesses. You're making this all sound very easy, I have to say, but I'm sure there was hard, hard moments, hard parts. So tell me about the worst business decision you've ever made. Ah, uh, well, so many. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Uh, worst business decision I've ever made. I, I wouldn't say it's a single business decision. I think one of the one of the balancing act is speed and growth. So it is you know, do you build very quickly? At what pace do you build? Uh, and I think sometimes in the past we you know have been guilty of uh, maybe getting too fast uh, and you know maybe not focusing on uh, you know existing businesses. Uh, and that's, you know, that's been a, a little bit of a, uh, a learning really to, uh, you know, sit in the beginning of the year, have a strategy that uh, make sure that we're protecting existing businesses, uh, but we're also scaling. So that's, that's really one of the biggest challenges I'll say uh, for myself, because when you're an entrepreneur, once you build that first business, it's really, really addictive. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't think there's any worst. I, I, I think the multiple and most entrepreneurs make make this uh you know bad this business decisions i think you just have to get the right structure for it and move on really, really quickly and so when you say scaling too fast i mean what's the risk there what 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 are the consequences of scaling too fast yeah i, I think you know maybe in other industries you can have a product that's not ready uh, so, you know, the way we build businesses is, is around product, whether that's a pure media or technology product or an e-commerce product, and then we build, you know, talents, people and capabilities around it. And sometimes, A, you might not have the right person, you might, you might not have the right product. Uh, you might be a bit too early for that market. Uh, you know, one of the eaters of uh, Future Tech, one of my businesses, is we want to be 18 months ahead of market. Uh, but sometimes you're talking to advertisers and they just, you know, just they're just not ready for that cutting edge uh, innovation. So uh, it's not just about scaling too fast. I think it's also scaling with the right people. You know, our products sometimes are not for 80 percent mass. They're really for the front runners. You know, the advertisers they want to challenge, they want to innovate very, very quickly. Yeah. OK, thanks for sharing that. Um, now. I'm assuming, or I can imagine that a lot of your learnings in your various ventures, coupled with your corporate career, has given you quite a bit of knowledge and also maybe a bit of intuition as to what makes a good and a bad investment case. Um, so perhaps you could share with us on what your thoughts are. What makes a good investment case? Yeah, first of all, uh, you know, I, I think you'll see this as a recurring theme. Uh, you know, we, we invest in people. I personally invest in people. Uh, but when what we're really looking for is businesses that are based on uh, sustainable practices. Uh, and by that, you know, I mean uh, not, uh, you know, uh, quick, you know, not, not get rich, uh, uh, schemes. Uh, I think you know sustainable businesses that care about the people, sustainable businesses that are building a product that actually elevates and empower uh, lives. Uh, 
but most most investors would tell you at the end of the day they're investing in that person uh, and actually you know that particular business might fail uh but you believe in that entrepreneur that it will build something else uh that might be better because it's all a it's all it's all a learning uh so definitely my, my number one is sustainable uh emerging markets uh and then you know the team behind it really really critical uh but going beyond that really what we're focusing on now uh is uh you know looking at areas that will elevate uh and really support this middle class this growing middle class africa uh and a lot of this thesis is around movement you know movement of people you know mobility startups movement of money uh you know cross border transactions uh you know movement of uh um of, of talent as well uh and i think really that's uh that's a focus area for us and we've seen a lot of uh a, a lot of success uh focusing on on that area for africa and the middle east now, it's interesting that you mention those things when we're talking movement of people, movement of uh, products, when we're talking cross-border transactions. These are some of the things that pop up on the list of what usually deter people from going on to or operating on the African continent. Now, what's quite curious in your situation is that you established the business in Dubai and then went um, into Africa. Why? Yeah, you, you, the growth is just massive. Uh, what we're seeing, you know, is double digit growth in this market. You know, in some of our African markets are going 30, 30, 35% year on year. Uh, and, and we, you know, I think a lot of investors, a lot of businesses now know, uh, you look at the youth po uh, population of, of, of the continent, uh, you look at the, you know, the human resource, uh, you look at, you know, the amount of coders coming from the continent, you look at the amount of uh, unicorns, you know, in, in the past, you know, two years coming from the continent. So it's it's a huge growth market for any business, uh, but they're scared of it. But, you know, it helps that I am African. Uh, so, you know, we do know how to navigate the waters over there. But also we are not just inspired, uh, but, but we are motivated uh, because when, when we do invest and when, when we do improve, you know, we're improving from our families, we're improving for our friends, we're improving for our adults when, when, when we visit. So it's it's definitely a growth area and we, we're definitely going to double down on it. Uh, you know, we're looking to, we're currently in, you know, South Africa and Nigeria, and we're looking to open Kenya, you know, early next year. Uh, and we'll continue to, to grow and support and, and challenge uh, media technology and investments in, in the African continent. It's exciting to hear that. Um, how did you go about entering the market? I mean, was this um, Future Tech going in on their own? Was this partnerships, joint ventures, acquisitions? Um, and how do you look at the market from that perspective in terms of your market entry plans? Yeah, it's uh, it's all of the above, right? We've, uh, uh, depending on the talent in the market, sometimes we've, we've just gone and we've, you know, we've invested in, in, in a team uh, that is, you know, only in that market, and we, we've uh, we've essentially built up from scratch. In some other markets, we've partnered. Uh, it's not my preferred route because we try and keep uh, our products and our services and our being and our DNA uh, very clean, uh, and it's it's kind of difficult to, you know, subcontract that out to to other people. There is an ethos on what future tech is. Uh, so what we really try to do is bring people into, into the business, uh, you know, get them onboarded and trained and, you know, to know what the business is all about. Uh, but in other markets, we, we just, you know, we've had to partner and then, you know, kind of maybe grow out of that partnership further down the line. Uh, but our market entry strategy is always simple. It's always research first. You know, we look at the scale of that market, we look at the challenges in that market. Uh, and, you know, even if we interested, uh, but the market is too early, we'll put it on the roadmap and we'll delay it and we'll focus on in other markets. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. It does indeed. You you have a lot of energy. Um, you you have you're very inspiring. I'm a bit, what, I'm a bit jet lag now, so I, I normally have more energy than this. So. Oh wow. <laughs> um, what keeps you going? What gets you excited? I mean, how do you ensure that you have that daily amount of motivation? Yeah, I, 
I consume, uh, you know, the written world a lot. So I, I read a lot. I, I like different perspectives. I think it constantly challenges you. Uh, and I really encourage everyone to read. And it doesn't need to be traditional where you've got multiple devices uh, to read now, you know. So I, I consume, a, you know, a lot of, a lot of the read, written world. And some of that is business. Uh, and some of that is just, you know, fictional, you know, kind of feeding the creative mind. Uh, I also have a, you know, a great, a great team. Uh, I love spending time with people. You know, I come from an African family of, of nine children. So, oh, wow. you know, that's kind of built. I, I, love, I love to be around people and that helps you for working media and marketing. So, you know, that gives me a lot of energy and I'm new, you know, I always have to be doing something new. Uh, but I think the learning is, you know, the new could be, uh, it doesn't have to be anything massive. It just has to be something that refreshes the mind. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's how I keep motivated and keep energized. I believe a lot in that, in the, the newness and how somebody was telling me how ah. your, your neuro pathways are recreated when you try something new, when you're learning. Um, so it's good to see that we have a similar way of thinking. But speaking of new, your latest venture, um, the commerce people, how did you come up with this? How is it operating? How is it going? Yeah, really, really interesting business for us. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, Future Tech is focused on advertising, uh, media and advertising. It's mostly looking at, you know, large corporations, large advertisers. Uh, and we, you know, we saw a gap. Uh, and it's, you know, this is, this is probably our first Africa fest uh, business. So the commerce people is all about enabling advertisers and bringing them to marketplaces like Jumai, like Amazon, uh, also preparing them for uh, the social commerce world because uh, we believe, you know, uh, all commerce in the future will be e-commerce. Uh, mm -hmm. So in that case, you know, shopping on TikTok, on Instagram, uh, on network, on all these apps. Uh, and we think, you know, there are a lot of advertisers that are, you know, currently uh, operating as a bricks and mortar business. Uh, and, you know, the game is leaving them very, very quickly. So that the challenge is to bring a lot of those products, uh, you know, FMCG products, any product that's physical uh, and, you know, showing, showing advertisers and brands on how to transact and sell uh, online uh, marketplaces in, in digital spaces. Uh, and, you know, the motivation be, uh, behind that is really uh, the first challenge any brand comes to us with is to sell more, whether that's mm -hmm. short-term acquisition or whether that's long-term acquisition. Uh, so we, you know, we built, we built the commerce people around A, enabling brands in marketplaces, uh, B, getting ready for, you know, this social commerce world where, you know, the, the new generation are just swiping and shopping uh, and it's a totally different world. Uh, and finally, you know, a lot of the organizations are just like, my boy, what, what do we do in, 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 in the virtual and, and, and the NFT space? Uh, so, you know, the third pillar of, of the future of, of the commerce people uh, is essentially, you know, helping uh, brands transact in, uh, in, in Web3, uh, you know, beyond NFTs, you know, virtual goods, uh, helping them reach new audiences with that. So, Really, really interesting, really, really challenging, but totally energizing. What have been the biggest bottlenecks for African companies looking to trade digitally? It's a great question. Um, I would say definitely education uh, is probably the biggest one. Uh, you know, there's the, 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 there's the barrier of just not knowing what to do. Most of it is instructional and, you know, step by step. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I don't think we have the education infrastructure for that. In fact, you know, what, one of the things we're looking to do as a business now, uh, our new strategy is educating the next generation. Uh, so, you know, looking at next, next generation of African uh, digital practitioners, uh, you know, uh, media technologists, uh, data scientists, uh, putting a percentage of our, uh, of our, of our profits uh, into those endeavors uh, and it's you know it's obviously uh, it's not it's not a charity case it's a case of empowering our uh, immediate ecosystem uh, and helping us make, make sure that we have the you know the right talent in place for the future and speaking of that um, if you were to speak to a young boy what would you tell him 
Do more. <laughs> Even more. Yeah, I've got a great story. I, uh, so, so one of my early mentors, uh, Charlie, once once first the media, really early media practitioners. I, I remembered probably six months into into Future Tech, uh, you know, in 2015. Uh, and I, you know, I, I said, you know, Charlie, how, how are you doing? It? You've got you know six, seven businesses, and you know, I'm like, I've just started, and you know, I'm running operations, I'm running finance, I'm running sales. You know, I'm, I'm trying to do business development. It's really challenging. It's a lot of stress. You know, I'm a bit overwhelmed. Uh, you know, how do you do it? Uh, and all he said to me was, uh, was do more. It probably took me another two years to understand what it meant because uh, that wasn't a great answer. But uh, what it meant was, you know, entrepreneurship and building businesses is like a muscle. The more you do, the faster you can do, the more structured you are, uh, the better people you have around you, uh, the more focused you have. So uh, it's, a, it's a daily challenge for me. Uh, so I do more of what I like uh, and what, you know, credible spaces that, you know, I think my businesses uh, can deliver the best experience. Uh, and I constantly challenge myself. And, we, and you know, we live in a, uh, an age of technology. Yeah, everything's moving at the speed of light. Uh, so, yeah, you know, do more. I think it's, it's an inspiration to people to, A, believe in themselves uh, and B, to, you know, to take, take on more challenges uh, really early in the career because, you know, you don't know and you can take bigger swings. So, you know, do more. Do more. And speaking of taking on more challenges, um, in closing, what are your plans and ambitions for future tech and Africa? Yeah, I think across the group, we, uh, as I said earlier, we, uh, we, we will uh, open in Kenya uh, next year. So, you know, in Q1. Uh, in the Middle East, we, 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 you know, we are expanding our presence in, in Saudi Arabia. It's a burgeoning market as well. Uh, we've just threatened our, our team in, in Nigeria, you know, really, really important and key market uh, for Africa. Uh, and for the commerce people, that's the first business that, you know, we, we build an HQ in, in Joburg in, in South Africa. So mm -hmm. totally different uh, team, totally different leadership. Um, and, you know, we'll double down on that as well. And uh, that's where we will have to leave this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, what I got out of this is do more. Such a powerful statement and such an example of an entrepreneur who is literally entrepreneuring, moving from left to right, from London through Africa to Dubai, back to Africa, and powering forward, creating more opportunities for the generations to come. I want to thank my guest, Boye Balogun, CEO and founder of Future Tech Media, and thank you to our audience. Until next time, it's a goodbye for now.